Hey everybody, it's Tammy Van Hollander. I'm here with another awesome, awesome play therapist, friend and colleague. I feel so blessed to have all these amazing people in my life. Leslie Baker, who is in California. Leslie, I was so excited to have you on today and um, you're talking about such an important topic compassion fatigue, which we are all feeling right now. And um, I think this is a type of video for everybody. I also feel like not enough of the, the people on the front line, you know, really even know what compassion fatigue is. You know, how do we get videos like this even out there to all of them? Uh, but wherever you'd love to start, I just think this is so important to be talking about. It is, and I thank you so much, Tammy, for hosting so many really helpful videos for our colleagues and our uh, in play therapy, but also I think a lot of them can be shared with others. Um, so, you know, take Tammy's videos and share them around and give them to friends, and hopefully this will be one that, that can be useful to others. So if you have a friend or a, a family member who's in the front lines uh, serving, please feel free to share it with them. So I think one of the important things to remember is as counselors, as uh, uh, play therapists in particular, but also any therapist, social workers, psychiatrists, uh, so, um, anybody who is working with and during as an essential worker uh, can be exposed to secondary trauma. And I put together a little PowerPoint just to help. Uh, so I'm gonna share that with us and then you'll have that also. Um, so just bear with me for one second while I pull that puppy up and uh, then we'll be able to uh, get that on there. Whoops, I think I just instead lost you all. We're still here, we see you. Okay. Let's see if I can get it with us instead of not with us. There it is. There we go. All right. Let's see if I can get it to present and we'll go from there. There we go. There's Tammy. Hi, darling. Hey. All right. So the first slide, I just say a little bit about what it is. It's really the cost of caring. Uh, we don't think about it a lot, but when you are exposed, um, we, we do talk about PTSD and trauma, and that's really the front line of being exposed to a trauma directly. Secondary trauma, which is also called compassion fatigue or vicarious trauma, is caused by secondary exposure. So when we listen to stories and we hear the hurts of others, um, by them retelling it to us, or we may have seen it from afar, or we may be reading something uh, uh, somebody is telling us, or for us as play therapists, we may see the trauma in the stand tray. We may see the battle. We may feel the feelings of our clients. And so this can in fact incur secondary trauma. I want to mention also that first responders kind of get a double whammy. So they get the trauma because they're often part of it in the face of it. And they can also pick up the secondary piece as well. This is by Figley. He uh, wrote this in a, in a 1995 book where he says, we feel the feelings of our clients. We experience their fears. We dream their dreams. Eventually, we lose a certain spark of optimism, humor, and hope. We tire. We aren't sick, but we aren't ourselves. And I think this really speaks to the part of us that is hurt um, and fatigued, but we may pass this by, Tammy. We may not say, oh, I'm not feeling so great. It may show in other ways, but we may not acknowledge it completely. So I really like the way that he talks about it. Mm -hmm. So here are some of the symptoms I'd like people to keep in mind. Um, so we, they often break them into behavioral, physical, and psychological. You may have some, you may have none, and there is the list goes on. So I only chose the few that I thought were, uh, you know, things that people might recognize. 
So you may find yourself in the behavioral having a lesser ability to cope with things that you could cope with before. You might see an increase in use of drugs and alcohol, and I've seen that in the reports uh, for many. Um, irritability and withdrawal, and a lot of people withdraw because, not because of COVID the way we're thinking, that people are uh, fe fearful of passing germs, but withdraw because uh, they're so overwhelmed in their own bodies that they don't want to uh, burden another. So think about that. In the physical realm, chronic exhaustion, difficulty sleeping, weight loss or weight gain, and the nervous system can get hyperactive. So you may feel flutters, you may feel tightness around your chest, you may experience headaches or back stress or find your shoulders are always high. So those can be just a few of the anxiety bodily symptoms you may feel. How about psychologically? You want to look at the chronic exhaustion, feelings of self-contempt. So sometimes when things are out of our control out here, we batify ourselves. We may be telling ourselves mean things and having much higher expectations. Um, so you can work with yourself on that. We sometimes develop a cynicism and just not a happy attitude, and that can lead into that anger. Mm -hmm. So these are only a few of the symptoms, but take a look and see if any of those are ringing true for you. One of the things that is important to mention is that when you are experiencing secondary trauma, it can click you into fight and flight. And so a lot of the work was done by Bessel van der Kolk and also uh, Pat Ogden and her colleague. So the important thing on this is just to remember that a person may be the optimal zone is right in the middle where you're not hyper aroused and you're not numb. That's where we'd like to be. So this graph just shows that hyper arousal can include fight and flight and uh, below the optimum arousal can include freezing or numbness or collapse. Okay, so if you're finding that you're in one of those uh, pieces that are above or below, that, that is being in fight, flight, or freeze, and in the most extreme, collapse, like an opossum who plays dead in order to be in a defense mechanism. So look at where you might be, and we're going to give you some tips on how to, how to cope, okay? So I went to the research and found that there are actual things that they've actually documented and researched that can be really helpful tools. Many of you have already heard that mindfulness and meditation are helpful. And I just cited a research uh, by Thompson and he has a lot of research on counselors, uh, particular using mindfulness equals less compassion fatigue or secondary post-traumatic stress. And this other one is called the 531 strategy for happiness. But before we do those, we want to make sure that we get grounded. So here are some simple grounding techniques. This one is a breathing technique that is uh, demonstrated by uh, Dr. Weil. Many people have heard of him. And uh, so let's try this, Tammy. Ready? So but first, I want you to empty your lungs, okay? So we're going to let them go down. And then we're going to breathe in for four seconds in our nose. And then we're going to hold our breath for seven seconds. And then we're going to exhale with a whoosh, like, and really let it out for eight. All right. You ready with me? Mm -hmm. So we're going to empty your lungs. We're going to breathe in through our nose for four. Hold it. and whoosh. Great. So you can do that up to four times and it really down regulates your body. So really try to remember you want to go on empty lungs, you want to fill for four, hold for seven, and exhale for eight. OK? 
Okay, so that's just one of a good grounding technique. Another one is my favorite, and I use this a lot with my clients. I call it the naming game. And you can sit, notice I put an office, although many people are at home. Um, but you just look around your office or your home and you begin to name things in your office. So you name colors, objects, like books and tables and chairs and pictures and calendars and a tree I see in that office. Uh, and then you can describe the details of them. So what do you see in that, in that picture, Tammy? I see a big window with buildings in the back. I see a calendar that looks like there's a sunset on it. I see a clock with red around the rim. A blue chair. I see a trash can. A computer. I've been seeing too many computers lately. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, what we know of this is that when the brain, this is from a DBT exercise, is when the brain is in calculating mind, it isn't also in emotion mind. And so you can do this with just counting, or you can do this with, if you're driving and you're feeling a little anxiety, you can start naming trees or colors or the license plates in front of you. And it will down-regulate you. So this can be used in a lot of places because it doesn't take any items or doesn't take anything to, uh, to take with you. It's simply uh, a naming game. And so I use this a lot. I have my clients use it and it's a nice grounding exercise. I have one more. Uh, this is really what we call a strategy for happiness. This is not a grounding technique. This is really a, a, a self-care technique. And this was developed by uh, Dr. Mira Gain, and the reference is in the end, but um, she developed this in a happiness institute where she comes from. And what we recommend, or what she recommends, is five minutes of daily meditation. Now you could do a guided meditation or you could do uh, a simply focus on a word and repeat the word. So you wanna also do your breathing with that, okay? The second thing you do after you do your five minutes of daily meditation, any time in the day, write down three positive things that happened to you that day. So Tammy, can you think of three things? I know it's later in your world than it is in mine across the world there. Have, what are some three things that happened to you today that were positive? Um, I got to see you. I got to have, I had several interviews uh, today of just some dear friends. I had an awesome session with one of my favorite clients that just totally filled my bucket. And um, my daughter was showing me some really cool tie dyes that she was making, which I was just like blown away by. Awesome. I heard those are a new thing going on. So that sounds exciting. That may have been four. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's okay. The more, the merrier, but at least we look for three. And for me today, it was meeting with you. It was also, my husband is doing some uh, video uh, vlogs for my team. And another one was I got to sleep in a little bit. So that was really cool. Um, and the last one is extend one act of kindness daily. So I haven't done mine today, but I, I am thinking of uh, something I'm going to do today. Uh, there's a gentleman who's all alone in my center, and I thought I would drop by something to his door, like a flower or a note. So I'll probably do that today. Beautiful. So, well, I just have to say, Leslie, that and another act of kindness that you are doing today is being able to share all of this with us, which is a huge act of kindness. You're sharing your time, your wisdom, your knowledge with us, and I so appreciate that. Thank you so much. And what we find, what, what Mirgain, Dr. Mirgain found is that if you keep this practice daily for five to seven days, you will find a change in your emotional state. You will feel more happy, you will experience the emotion of joy and happiness more often. So give it a try and see if that, that's something that you would like to add. So 
it's not enough to just use tools. We also want to look at what prevents compassion fatigue. And here are 10 steps that work and are uh, evidence-based. So one of them is to really work on being a slide and not a sponge. So as we listen to these stories, we want you to be attentive, but I want you to practice to let that story slide off of you and try not to hold it and, and hold it and let it be moldy. You know how sponges sit on your sink and they, they, they access water and then they just sit there and mold? So you want to take the story and let it slide off and don't let it sit in you and get moldy. Um, so that's one. The second is, is the big one we all think about, sleep, eat, and move. Those are the hallmarks to mental health anyway. So be sure you're getting enough rest. Be sure you're feeding yourself well and get some a little movement in there, okay? And remember that variety is the spice of life. So you want to make sure that you're not doing the exact same thing every day. And so for us as play therapists, that's not too bad because we kids pick different toys and they do different sand trays. But if you're in a situation where it's getting too mundane, try to uh, spice it up a little. And lastly, when you do do something and it's not coming out the best way that you wanted it, give yourself a break. Okay, try to focus on what did go well, not what didn't go well. And there's a couple others. One is something we're doing today is co connecting with colleagues. Another one is we want you to focus on the growth and the opportunities rather than a failure from something we did. And last, uh, second to last, you want to get your relax on. So what are you doing for relaxing, Tammy? I am hoping after this, because it's later here, is to light some candles and actually just take a nice bath. That is my, <laughs> that is my plan for this That's evening. Wonderful. Yeah, I like it. And it's really sunny here in California, so I thought I would go out and sit on the patio and, and, and just enjoy a little bit of sun. And my husband does a lot of gardening, so I'm going to go look and see if there's a flower or two I can pick and uh and listen to music that's our little guy down there who's sliding the, the music slide and the last thing that's probably the hardest for a lot of my uh my caring people to do is to remember put your mask on first before you serve others if you're not well taken care of then you're not going to have the energy or the ability to care for those you truly care about so remember that all these things above, they, they are predicated upon that, that piece. So please don't feel, you know, I encourage you not to feel guilty if you do self-care because without you, we cannot serve the children, the families, the teens, and the elders that we're caring for unless we care for ourselves. So that's it. This is me. And, uh, and I really appreciate that. And any questions for us, kiddo? And there's the references too, just so people have a, a look at those. I just think this is all so helpful. And I always use the terminology of the, the oxygen mask uh, yeah. as well. And, you know, I think, you know, one of the things that has come up in many of the interviews and in general is like, we're all experiencing so many different types of grief and loss and exhaustion and this we're, we're so critical trying to compare it to others like how can we be complaining about not going to the playroom when people are dying or how you know doing this kind of comparison type of game and rather than like honoring that it's okay to feel how we feel rather than comparing all this devastation and all the things that are happening in the world but there's almost like this guilt of complaining or this guilt of feeling any loss when the massive losses and the grief and the stories are just, they're overwhelming. That's compassion fatigue, right? And then putting it on top of any of our own stuff, it's like, should we, do we deserve to be doing that? And is that okay? And I think that that's something that 
I know it is, but I think it's hard to truly believe. You know, in EMDR, we're like, well, do you believe it in your head or in your heart? And I could be saying that in my head, but in my heart, do I really believe it? You know, that's a hard one. You know, in my heart, I believe that my focus needs to be on all these losses and all the grief and so much of the suffering going on right now. So that's just something that kind of came up as I was listening to your presentation. Right. And I think that it's so critical to understand that it's not a hierarchy of, of loss. Like it's not like your loss is higher than my loss. And this one, because it's more a traumatic loss versus an everyday loss of, you know, I've lost some of my clients because they're not able or uh, they don't feel safe doing teletherapy. Uh, for whatever reasons, okay? So no badifying, just a fact, okay? Um, even though we can make it very simple, even though we can do what we can do, some people have chosen to hunker down, and that's okay. But it it still can feel like a loss, like, like and, and, and so are we allowed to, to cope with those losses when, in fact, we may not have lost a loved one to COVID? So yes, the answer to that is, of course you do. And your schedules are off. And we may worry about our businesses or we may worry, my dad is 90 years old and he's in a facility. So I worry about him, he's doing fine. But you know, that may change. So um, in fact, I called him the other day and he couldn't talk because they were having a halt they're standing in their doorways and they were having a, a party. <laughs> awesome. So everybody learns to cope, right? Yeah. But, but the deal is, is that you're anyone's loss, whether it's a family member who passes on for other reasons. Uh, I have a case with like that. So, you know, there, every loss deserves attention. Every loss deserves to be held and to be grieved and to be noted because it's so important that we give ourselves the room to grieve. So that's another, you know, uh, that, that's a whole nother thing we could talk about, right? Um, and have a different presentation on, but I think you bring up a really good issue. Is it, do you, can you take time to grieve your losses? Yes, and please do because otherwise, it will wear on you, my friends. And, and, and we want you to have the room for that. Right. Leslie, thank you. This is wonderful. And it's going to help so many people. And I, so many of the ideas that you gave, I absolutely will be using. And it's the exact tools that I really felt like I needed in terms of like really, yeah, just because we need some of those tools that, 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 yeah. So thank you. And I'm so glad that you were able to come on and it was great to see you. Great to see you too, Tammy. Thank you so much. And I'm honored and uh, excited and keep doing what you're doing. You're helping so many people and we appreciate it. Okay. Thanks, Leslie. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Dear. Bye.